Hey, what's up guys? It's Wartovic here, and today we're going to be reviewing the ASUS PG2070 AQN display, the world's first 1440p 360 hertz monitor. And I am here to tell you guys today that not only is this an absolutely magnificent competitive gaming monitor, but it also does something that a lot of its other competitors cannot do, which is play non-competitive games really, really well. This game does not only a magnificent job in competitive games that you will be reaching 360 hertz, but it also does a really good job in games that you will first and foremost not be reaching anywhere near 360 hertz, but also in kind of like single player games such as Doom Eternal, where you will be reaching that 360 hertz threshold, but also want to have a ridiculously nice experience when it comes to things like picture quality, which this monitor does ridiculously well at its 1440p resolution. It also has amazing color vibrancy with options to make it even more colorful and vibrant if you so choose. It also has a peak brightness in SDR of 500 nits across the entire display, which is just absolutely fantastic. It's also an HDR capable display with being able to reach up to 600 nits, and then also has just an onslaught of features such as this 25 inch aspect mode for you guys that like to play, I guess, in a 25 inch mode. It does it with the black bars. It's really freaking cool and I'll showcase that throughout the video. Now, in addition with saying that, I have recorded a couple of gameplay clips that I will be showcasing throughout the video over the past week. I have already done the liberty of uploading a couple of those videos. I will be also uploading them periodically throughout the week as I after I release this video. So if you guys would like to see the unedited versions of those, I will link them in the description below. And as I upload more, I will keep adding them as well. But with saying that, thank you guys again, like always, so much for watching. If you guys like what you see, please make sure to hit the like, subscribe button, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So guys, the first thing I'd like to talk about today is how is it gaming at 360 hertz and then how is 360 hertz then for combined with 1440p? Now, first and foremost, at the time of this video, 360 hertz is still the new kid on the block. Even in the esports field, it is not the norm. And that is because of the ridiculously high hardware requirements to reach that benchmark. Now, I was saying that as more and more displays get on the market and then hardware prices come down, I can definitely see within the next two years, 360 hertz becoming a normalcy within the esports arena. But at the time of this video, it is still very new tech. Now, with saying that, a lot of people go, why would I even play at 360 hertz? Like, that's just so ridiculously high, you wouldn't even be able to see it. Now, I can say with complete confidence that it is not a gimmick, it is the real deal, and um, I cannot wait to see, like, the pros and stuff start to play at this at, like, the normal level, because I feel like gaming is just going to get even, like, faster, and people are just be able to even do even cooler stuff. Um... I can say, though, that it is not the same jump of, say, something like 30 to 60 or even 60 to 144, but the jump to, say, 240 to 360 hertz, even though it's not as big as the other ones, you can still definitely not only see it, but also feel it. As you move your mouse cursor across the screen in League of Legends, or you even wave your gun around and say Overwatch, CSGO, Apex Legends, or Overwatch, it just is absolutely amazing to see in motion. Watching the character models move at such a silky refresh rate is just absolutely astonishing. I am able to see Roadhog hooks come right at me. You can see Reinhardt just as he charges his animation to charge right at you. You can see a tracer dash around the corner and hook her with Roadhog right before she even has time to react or even like a Farah using her E to try to get back behind your team. You can literally see her smoothly fly through the air and like McCree, well I was about to say stun but McCree doesn't, nope not McCree, Cassidy. You can't um, stun with Cassidy anymore but you get the point that I'm trying to make. A lot of the things and the, the, the crazy things that people try to pull in games 360 hertz makes it easier to you, um, for you to have time to react and see smoothly as that character moves across the screen. When you, when you, let's say, I'm sorry I keep giving you so much Overwatch examples, but I'm trying to like give you guys like a grasp of how good 360 hertz look. When you're playing and it's like a Graviton and Zarya and like all the people are moving in it, you can clearly see each head as it's in it. And the jump from 1080p with my X25 Predator that I had, because I've been using 360 hertz for about a year now, so I'm used to it. The jump from 1080p to 1440p is 
absolutely amazing. Not only do you get the amazing silky smoothness of 360 hertz, but you also get the crisp sharpness that you do not get in 1080p. Now, let's say there's a Pharaoh or a Mercy far on the distance. I can not only clearly see as her character model is moving throughout the air without almost like any blur, but I can also clearly see her head as I'm dinking her away as Ash McCree or even Soldier 76. 360 hertz in 1440p is like the absolute perfect baby. Like it just goes so well together and it almost, it's not a cheat code per se, but it almost feels like a cheat code because you get a slight edge over a lot of your other peers. Now with saying all that, you might be saying, Lord Civic, why the hell would I not get this monitor? You are just raving on and on about it. Everything you said is just absolutely amazing and I'm sold. I don't care about the thousand dollar price tag. I'm going to get this monitor. Stop, random citizen. You might be making the wrong decision, and let me tell you why. First and foremost, this is a 1440p, 360 hertz monitor. This thing is probably one of, if not the hardest displays I've ever had to run. Not only because of the ridiculously high GPU requirements, even playing at 4K requires a lot of GPU power, but to be able to use this monitor, you have to have a ridiculously powerful CPU to match it. If you are looking at getting this monitor, and I know this is like a crazy thing to say, you're probably not going to want to go with anything lower than a 3070. And even then, I'd say you'd be cutting it. I'd honestly probably recommend a 3080 at a minimum for this. And that is just absolutely crazy to say. Also, in addition, I don't even think a 10 series Intel CPU would be what you're looking for. You need to have an 11 series or up. This thing is an absolute powerhouse that requires a multi thousand. Well, I don't know. Depends on where you can get your parts from. Because I mean, you get used, you buy it for a friend, you're probably not going to spend that much money. But regardless, this requires a ridiculous amount of power to put out. And um, even with my 4090 and 360 hertz in, say, Overwatch, which I am ridiculously surprised to find, I'm able to run Overwatch 2 at absolute max settings. I saw NVIDIA's video a couple of weeks ago before the 4090 dropped. I thought it was like medium to high settings. I didn't believe it. They were getting like 500 FPS in the video. But no, you can get above 360 hertz at max settings in like, say, like Overwatch 2 and different stuff like that. And I would think the same rule would apply in something like CSGO or Valorant because they're not that great of demanding games but do not get this monitor do not look at the specs and just be like oh this is the display for me everybody's talking about it blah 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 do not get it unless you have the power to back it up okay guys so the last thing i would like to speak about today is how all the features in this monitor and the specs combine in culmination with each other um, first and foremost, I just want to apologize that I cannot give a review in comparison to a lot of this monitor's direct competitors, such as the uh, Zowie monitor that comes with the Diac module. I've actually heard that that has the absolute best motion clarity on the market, but I cannot give a direct comparison because I only am able to currently review monitors and stuff that I have purchasedly, personally purchased myself. I do hope to get to one point where companies start to send me test units and stuff like that, but I have not made it to that level just yet. But if you are looking at grayscale uniformity, motion clarity examples, and just other top of the line tech spec sheets in comparison to this monitor's direct competitors, um, I would recommend watching the tech testers review, uh, monitors unbox, Optimum Tech, or even to the Tech Shop. They have all done very good examples in comparing this monitor to its direct competitors, um, and I would definitely go that way if you're curious in that. Now, with saying that, the first thing I want to talk about before we hop into the culmination of features of this monitor is the 25-inch mode. The 25-inch mode on this monitor is a really cool feature that is really not found on a lot of displays, and it kind of makes sense why it would be on a display like this. A lot of esports purists like to play in purely 25 inch mode displays. 
And this monitor is really like the best of both worlds because it is a 27 inch display that gives you the option to play at 25 inches. And it does that by putting black bars around the basically entire display and shaping it so that it's 25 inches. And it's not really like gimmicky at all either. The black levels on the monitor are pretty impressive and it almost is something like after a couple of seconds you just get zoned into. I have a video clip of me playing Overwatch 2 at 25 inches um, that I'll be putting in this video. And then also, as I said at the beginning, you can watch the unedited version. Um, I will link that below. I've already uploaded that. And I can say it was a pretty cool experience. Now, me personally, I wouldn't use it because I like playing at directly 1440p, 27 inches. But for people that are esports purists that like to play with less screen real estate because it's easier to look at everything on the screen, um, you will be happy to know is a really cool feature and you will have to pay in 1080p or I think 1323. Um, but at the 1323, you don't really lose that much of the sharpness. It's still pretty crisp and I really wasn't able to tell the difference between the two. Now, if you play 1080p with a 25 inch mode, you will definitely tell the difference. But at that, it's basically a really cool experience. Now, I was saying that at the beginning of the review, I spoke about how this monitor has a leg up over a lot of the other competitive displays just by looking at the spec sheets. I don't even really have to see them. And that is because this is, as I said, the world's first 1440p 360 hertz monitor. The 1440p resolution, resolution alone gives this a huge leg up over its competitors when you're playing non-competitive games i.e. an example, Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is a well-optimized game that runs off of the ID Tech engine made by Bethesda. And it is not only a pretty easy game to run, it is ridiculously well-optimized where you will get it, be getting a lot of FPS. With my 4090 and 3900K, I'm able to get about 300 FPS, kind of fluctuates down, there's a lot of action going on, um, at Ultra Nightmare settings. And you will be hard pressed to find an even crazier experience on the, a crazier experience on the market than that. Obviously, you know, there's ultra wide, there's super ultra wide, there's 4K or whatever, but playing this game at 1440p at 300 hertz is pretty damn wild. And um, that also ties into the point of just playing games like, let's say, Red Dead Redemption or like even God of War. God of War, in per se, you could only run at about like maybe 200 FPS, but because of the amazing vibrance of color on the monitor and then also the peak brightness that I spoke of earlier, 500 nits and then 600 nits in HDR, it makes playing basically any game a very fun experience. Now, a lot of you guys probably have noticed that my LG CX OLED is gone. Now, for the longest, I had the LG CX because I wanted a very fun 16 by nine aspect ratio experience at my desk. The only other monitor I really had was an ultra wide. And after three days, this monitor gave me a reason to get rid of my LG CX. Now, wait, hold on. I'm still Team OLED. I have a 77-inch CX literally five feet away from me. When I played God of War before Ragnarok came out, I still play on a 77-inch. So I am still Team OLED, and probably sometime down the, some, someday down the line, I do plan on getting an OLED display, and it would be really cool if we got one at 360 hertz. But regardless, this monitor is the first thing that's been like, okay, I don't need the OLED anymore at my desk. This is the monitor that I'm going to play all my games at. And it is not, when I say good enough, I don't mean like, oh, it's good enough. I mean, it's good enough. Like this is the ideal monitor that I will use to play every 16 by nine game when I'm at my desk. Now with saying that though, um, I can definitely see later down the line, uh, different options and different stuff coming up. And I'm very excited to see what other computer monitor display makers do because everything is just getting ridiculously more creative and it's just really cool to see we have OLED ultra wise now supposed to be getting some OLED 1440p 32 inch displays and it's just really cool everything that's going on now I'll say that I hope I was able to break down enough easily why I love this monitor and why I might think it might be ideal for you guys um, but with saying that this monitor is absolutely amazing and I love it so much and I know a subset of people are just like me are going to absolutely love this monitor and I hope I've done a good job of explaining whether this device is or isn't for you. Regardless, if you guys like this video, please make sure to hit that like subscribe button. Like I said at the beginning, 
watch the unedited versions of all the gameplay that I've taken up over the entire week. And I was saying that, thank you guys again so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video.